for today's video. I'm just uh, sharing something I've been working on for a while now, uh, and that is taking 277 Fury brass, the hybrid brass, so your case itself can handle more pressure, and giving the 65 Creedmoor a little bit of a boost. Um, I'm working on 308 too, and will be the 7M M08. Just playing around with different powders and stuff uh, because of case capacity and stuff. The best I've been able to achieve with this is the 142 grain active on long range is 3,080 feet per second safely. Uh, that's faster than I want them. I'm still working on a load, uh, playing with powders, trying to get my standard deviations and stuff a little better. Um, a couple times are around that 11 feet per second difference on my extreme spread, and I like single digit all the way across, uh, which is I found with some of the loads when I'm not trying to push them, it's easier with these uh, hybrid cases because that uh, stainless steel base or stainless alloy, it uh, there are no burrs that need removed on the flash holes. All your flash holes are perfect and your base doesn't stretch on firing so you don't have ununiform primer pockets. Just a sweet little idea I'm hoping to see more of in the future, just in helping rounds like this gain a little bit more velocity or completely new rounds, but this type technology. Uh, you got the all the PRC lines, you know, everything that's come out recently. So much is more marketing than anything. Yes, they're putting research in it and changing some stuff that needed changed. But did we really need another 7mm on the market? No. But then you look at the 7mm backcountry and go, ah, new technology that actually brings something different. Love the idea. Hope we see more of this in the future. Uh, pretty sure I'm going to have to have a 277 Fury built in a lightweight bolt action since I can't buy one. Because I'm just loving this case and what it can do. And I think the 277 Fury will blow the 68 Western, which is a round I absolutely love, completely out of the water uh, for efficiency. So enough rambling for right now. Let's take a few shots. one was going and hopefully you can see it okay on the camera but 2887.7 out of a 20 inch barrel 142 grain acubone long we are pretty much right there where the 6.5 PRC is factory that one at 2875 so I don't want to do a long video or anything um, getting range time in is hard enough let alone taking time for videos I was gonna do a more long video on this and my GoPro was dead I was gonna give up on it altogether and I'm like hey just use your phone because you don't need a long ass video just show done safely or done properly it is safe to take and convert the 277 fury into other rounds and then push the limits a little bit uh anybody that's into hand loading knows start low work up and it can be and it is safe uh if you don't abide by the standard uh just rules unsaid rules of reloading starting low starting high that's 100 percent on you but done right it's safe. You can get an edge. Having played with this right here makes me go, ooh. A 260 aptly improved, increasing your case capacity, because that's my biggest limitation here is case capacity, uh, would like blow the PRC completely out of the water. Um, so with this technology, I'm really hoping to see the shooting industry going with it. I know with like the 7mm backcountry, I still have my personal mixed feelings. It's that full uh, 
<clears throat> they say it's stainless steel, but it is magnetic. So it's like, okay, it must be a stainless steel alloy of sorts, but what makes those steel cases per se uh, reloadable where your old school ones aren't? And using SIG's technology, do you get the better reload reloadability with the benefits of the higher pressure? Uh, I don't know. I'm excited to see where this goes because what I would like to see is this total package being in that six pound range. I want to see us get down into a compact, legit back country, lightweight, under five pound package that is still a legitimate elk gun. And that is totally doable with this technology. Give me just a nice short action compact 16 inch barrel the seven millimeter back country and just what they're doing with that shows we're just now dabbling with the technology we can now and that's just me i'm not a bench shooter but i like bench shooting accuracy you need to practice you need to be if you're going to be shooting past 300 yards you need a sub moa gun moa is not good enough um, if you're going to be shooting past 500 yards, you probably want a half MOA or better gun. I would suggest better. Uh, can we do that, getting the velocities and everything on a tiny little package that you barely know you're carrying because weight matters the more you're, the further in you're hiking? I think we can. I think the technology is here. I think uh, with the backcountry, we're finally seeing a push in new technology instead of just revamping the old. Your whole PRC line, although some of that might have been needed, you're you're just revamping stuff. You're just trying to give uh, the 7mm rim mag a little bit more of an edge, and you come out with the 7 PRC, which I'm not going to switch to because it has doesn't really have anything over the 7mm rim mag. So rather than just continuing to ramble on. Just some of my opinions on this is a great way to go give your gun a little bit extra and done right is perfectly safe you can even get ar 10 uppers and your bolt carriers and everything are still the same so you're not running into that the case being able to handle extra pressure you're not running into the rest of the system failing if you stay within the appropriate numbers so it can be done safely i'm hoping the industry takes this technology i don't know why why I can't buy one of these rifles right now in the 277 Fury. It's been out long enough. Why is it not getting standardized? Why is that not an option? Because I really see that's the direction we need to go or should go because it's one of the only directions where there's holes that haven't been filled. Give me a, a like, I love this light little package, but I would love it if it was just a little bit lighter and had more stopping power. We're developing the technology. Let's see where it goes. Hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I'll catch you on another one.